Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. All right, so I promised that I was going to start going through some of the um, policies uh, of um, different people, and I'm going to start with Joe Biden. I'm not going to bother with Trump because, as many people have pointed out, Trump has no policies uh, or no forward policies or plans for a, a second um, election or, you know, second term in office. His entire website is nothing but, uh, oh, well, I've accomplished this, I've accomplished that, and, well, we know what he's accomplished, and, and you know, it's really not good. Uh, but I'm going to start uh, with Joe Biden. I'm not going to go too far through this because of one simple reason. Um, we have already heard about the uh, conference call that he had with his major donors and promising them that nothing's going to change, that uh, any progressive uh, policies that he puts forward is basically just for the, uh, the Warren uh, supporters. And he doesn't even mention Sanders uh, in that. So... We're going to take a quick look at this. Uh, pardon me while I switch a few things here. All right. Got to do that. Got to do that. All right. So, some of his ideas and statements are actually, I'm going to say, pretty good. You know, um, he states that he is... Um, in favor of, excuse me, I'm going to just do this here. All right, in favor of making um, college free uh, for the first two years of community college or other high quality training program without debt for any hard-working individual. Now, let's, uh, I, I kind of question that. For any hard-working individual, what, is, what exactly does that mean? Uh, all right, learning to improve, learning to improve their skills to keep up with the changing nature of work. Uh, but he says uh, this plan will be a Federal-state partnership with the federal government covering 75% of the costs and states contributing the remaining obligation. The federal government will cover up to 95% of the cost for Indian tribes operating community colleges serving low-income students. All right. Will the states be able to do this? Which states would be able to do this? Because the states are all in debt and already having massive difficulty in paying their own bills for basic services. Um, you know, so uh, a lot of this is just filler. Um, you know, make a $50 billion investment in workforce training. Well, $50 billion uh, doesn't really go real far. Uh, but he talks about, uh, you know, 2014, Obama asked Biden to develop a national strategy for reforming our nation's workforce training programs designed to prepare ready-to-work Americans with ready-to-be-filled jobs. Well, where are those jobs coming from? Um, you know, that's, that's a, a big problem here. All right. Uh, Invest $8 billion to help community colleges improve the health and safety of their facilities. 
All right. Uh, this is, you know, so, yeah, make public colleges and universities tuition-free for all families with incomes between below $125,000. Okay, this all sounds good. I, I, I applaud all of this and uh, talks about using Pell Grants to help uh, pay for other needs um, such as textbooks and so forth and so on. Um, All right, and more than half payments on undergraduate federal student loans by simplifying and increasing generosity of today's income based repayment program. Okay, this one is highly questionable. Under the Biden plan, individuals making 25000 or less per year will not owe any payments on their undergraduate federal student loans and also won't accrue any interest on those loans. Everyone else will pay 5% of their discretionary income my, minus income minus taxes and essential spending like housing and food over $25,000 toward their loans. After 20 years, the remainder of the loans for people who have responsibly made payments through the program will be 100% forgiven. Uh, individuals with new and existing loans will be automatically enrolled. This doesn't state whether if you've already been paying on a loan for 20 years, if this is going to affect you at all. So... And responsibly making payments, uh, according to um, whose criteria for that. All right. Um, there was uh, something else in here. Provide further immediate relief to working families. There's nothing really specific in here. <coughs> He talks about uh, infrastructure and uh, clean energy, uh, but it's all it's all rhetoric. It's all platitudes. There, there's really nothing too specific. You can keep reading throughout all of this, but you're not going to find much uh, in the way of specifics on this. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Um, all right. Biden plan for mobilizing American talent and heart to create a 21st century caregiving and education force. Uh, he talks about expanding money to uh, providing care to people and, you know, uh, training, uh, treat caregivers, early educators, $775 billion over 10 years and will be paid back for by rolling back unproductive and unequal tax breaks for real estate investors with incomes over $400,000 and taking steps to increase tax compliance for high-income earners. If, if that was going to happen, why didn't it happen under he and uh, Obama, um, but uh, again, the, his talk about increasing taxes on the wealthy is completely negated by his uh, conver his conference call with those same people. He has been a corporate slave for his entire career. Uh, talking about eliminating a wait list for home and community care under Medicaid, but um, how is this going to happen? 
I, I mean, yeah, unless you expand that care directly without giving money to corporations to do it, and if you're going to cut the profits uh, of the corporations, why are they going to do it at all? So either you're talking about building government care or you're just funding the corporations. You're, you're doing corporate welfare. And his health plan, which I'm not even going to bring up, it's nothing but uh, the but Obamacare. It's reinstituting Obamacare. Adding 150,000 community health workers. How do you do that? Unless, I mean, okay, fine. Uh, but that's not going to, even with his education program, you're not going to increase those, the number of health workers in less than two years, at the very least, probably longer. I brought up the point before uh, that universal health care would result in an immediate shortage of health care workers because it takes time to train health care workers. I've talked about this before. All right, uh, going to this page. Uh, Ensure the future is made in all of America by all of America's workers. Um, you know what? That's MAGA. That's make America great again. That's isolationism. Um, okay, I, I'm all for expanding America's uh, manufacturing capacity, but that's MAGA. All right? Has emergency action, action plan to save the economy. It talks about turning the tide on the epidemic, launch a task force. What, what, what happened to the task force he had? All right. Um, get as many people on the payroll as possible and make Americans whole for lost hours and wages. Uh, keep small businesses and business, and he's talking about making loans. All right, included in this legislation uh, is $377 billion for small businesses. This money will guarantee immediate loans that banks provide to small businesses to make payroll, rent, and other costs and keep their doors open. So they'll get the loans out faster, but they're loans. All you're doing is, may, is enforcing more debt on those small com employers. Um, <laughs> all right. Provided for additional checks to families should conditions require. Uh, Forgive a minimum of 10000 per person for federal student loans. Okay, that would be good if, it, if he intends to do it. All right, increase Social Security checks by 200 a month. That would be great. That is a good thing. Emergency paid sick leave to everyone who needs it. He does talk about... Um, Increasing that, the federal, making sick leave a federal benefit. Um, all right, ensure one, no one has to pay a dollar out of pocket for COVID-19 testing treatment or an eventual vaccine. Okay, a lot of this, I'm going to say, sounds pretty good. All right, a government that works for the people. All right, so this is where this sounds great, except for the conference call. 
You know, he believes that we could improve our politics overnight if we flush big money from the system. All right, he says, introduce a constitu constitutional amendment to entirely eliminate private dollars from our federal elections. Biden believes it's long past time. Blah, blah, blah. Um, all right, Biden will fight for a constitutional amendment that will require candidates for federal office to solely fund their campaigns with public dollars and prevent outside spending from distorting the election process. It will return our democracy to the people. All right. Enact legislation to provide voluntary matching funds for federal candidates receiving small dollar donations. Doesn't that just go against uh, what he just said above? Solely funding their campaigns with public dollars. Um, okay, fine. Keep foreign money out of our elections. Does that include Israel? Does that include APAC? All right. Uh, direct a new independent agency, Commission on Federal Ethics, to ensure assure vigorous and unified enforcement of this and other anti-corruption laws. Okay, restrict super PACs. Well, getting rid of corporate donations, that would eliminate super PACs. All right. Increase transparency of election spending. I agree with this. Okay. Uh, no more hiding behind dark money groups to spread lies. Uh, and dark money groups. I'm all for that. All right. Real time disclosure. All right. And. Okay. Prohibit lobbyist contributions to those who they lobby. Biden's presidential campaign is refusing any funding from lobbyists and corporate PACs. <coughs> well. Really? Yeah, as President Hill enact legislation to bar lobbyists from making contributions to and fundraising or bundling for those who they lobby. This legislation will be designed to ensure that the public knows as much as possible about the political spending of those who seek to influence office holders and other government officials. Any lobbyist contribution must be disclosed within 24 hours and any lobbyist hosted fundraising event must be disclosed before it occurs Let's go to open secrets. Top contributors federal election funding data for Joe Biden 2020 cycle. 1630 fund. Democracy PAC. I'm not looking up what some of those are. You know that they're just, uh, you know, blue no matter who groups. Paloma Partners. Euclidean Capital. League of Conservation Voters. American Bridge, 21st Century. Simon Property Group. Renaissance Technologies, Marcus and Millichap. Balpos Group, Sequoia Capital Intersystems Corporation. Bain Capital. Choice Hotels International, Goodlands Management. Financial Management, Sumerian Foundation, American Foundation of Teachers, Massimo Corporations, Greylock Partners. Okay, um, I think uh, I'm just going to stop right there. I, I think I've already brought out enough information here to illustrate exactly what he, he is really doing here and, and enough to make you ask questions. Why is corporate media, why are, why is Wall Street supporting Biden more than they're supporting Trump? Because Trump is they're both on the same side. They're both on the sides of corporations. They're both on the sides of Wall Street. 
the fact is that Trump is just, he's open about it. Whether by ignorance or intent, he is open about it. He actually reveals the agenda. And, you know, there has not been a single word coming from Biden about ending any wars. He has no intention of ending any wars. It was under Obama and Biden that we went from bombing two countries to bombing seven countries, under which we increased our arms sales to absolute record numbers at that time. We've over... We've gone over that number now, but to Saudi Arabia and Israel and so forth and so on, um, it was under Obama that we that funding to Israel went up to uh, what thirty eight billion dollars every in ten years, so four billion dollars a year. Um, you know, we funded ISIS. We funded. Uh, the Israeli, the Saudi war against Yemen. We illegally occupied Syria. We illegally uh, destroyed Libya. So, when when you hear him talking about diplomacy, you need to keep these things in mind. Because he's not going to mention any of it. He's not going to say any of this was a mistake. He is not going to take any of it back. He is not going to mention bringing any of our troops home, reducing military spending. He has actually directly stated that he wants to increase military spending. So... These are all things that have to be questioned. Some of his rhetoric sounds good. But when you look at it objectively and counterbalance it with the known facts, there, there's nothing there to believe in. There's nothing there to trust. All right? So that is what I've got on uh, Joe Biden like I said, I don't need to go into anything about Trump. He, his first term has been disastrous. Our economy is collapsing. We haven't ended any wars. We, people are making less money than they were. So, it's one or the other. I, I mean, take your pick. So, at least Trump has some kind of rhetoric about ending wars, and he has some kind of resistance coming from somewhere. Instead, we need to focus on the uh, down-ballot races and elect as many progressives, true progressives, as possible, and hold their feet to the fire, no matter who is elected. But at the top, it doesn't matter which one you vote for. You're still going to get the same thing or worse. All right, so that's the end of this one. And please share this video, talk about these subjects. Um, the pages that I was showing you were all from Biden's own campaign website. JoeBiden.com. So, go ahead and look it all up yourself. There's a lot more there, but you have to look at it objectively. Don't, don't just fall for it. You know, this is hope and change all over again. All right, so that's the end of this one. If you can, please donate a dollar a month to help expand the channel, and I will talk to you later.